Welcome to a lesson on hypothesis testing for matched or paired samples. In a hypothesis test for matched or paired samples, subjects are matched in pairs and differences are calculated. The differences are of the data. The population mean for the differences mu sub d is then tested using a student's t-test for a single population mean with n minus one degrees of freedom, where n is the number of differences. So the test statistic is a t-score given by the formula shown here below. Let's take a look at an example. A study was conducted to investigate the effectiveness of hypnotism in reducing pain. Results for randomly selected subjects are shown in table 10.11 below. A lower score indicates less pain. The before value is matched to an after value and the differences are calculated. The differences have a normal distribution. Are the sensory measurements on average lower after hypnotism test at a 5% significance level? So the first step is to find the differences, which is the after amount minus the before amount. So I've already set this up on the next slide. Again, the first column shows the after data. The second column shows the before data. The third column shows the differences. So the third column is the data we use to perform a single sample hypothesis test. So the data is listed here below. Notice how to find the t-score by hand we do need to find the sample mean and sample standard deviation. Let's go ahead and find that now before we set up the null and alternative hypotheses. And let's find these using the T84. To save time, I've already entered the data into the calculator. Remember, the data are the differences. So going to the calculator to enter data, press STAT, ENTER. Again, I already have the differences here in L1. Next, we press STAT. Right arrow wants to calculate and then option one for one bar stats, and therefore we press enter. The data is in L1, which is correct. If this was not L1, we would press second number one for L1. Go down to calculate, press enter. Notice the sample mean is negative 3.125. The sample standard deviation is approximately 2.911. Let's go ahead and record this information. Remember the question is, are the sensory measurements on average lower after hypnotism? Test at a 5% level of significance. So if the measurements are lower, then mu sub d is less than zero, which is the alternative hypothesis. And if mu sub d is not less than zero, mu sub d is greater than or equal to zero, which is the null hypothesis. And we know alpha is equal to 0 0.5, which is 5% as a decimal. So again, the null hypothesis is zero or positive, meaning that there is the same or more pain after hypnotism, and the alternative hypothesis is negative, meaning there is less pain after hypnotism. And again, the distribution is a student's T distribution with N minus one, or in this case, seven degrees of freedom. Before we determine the T score and P value on the T84, and then verify the T score by hand, let's take a look at the distribution shown below. If the hypnotism has no effect, then mu sub D is zero, which is at the center of the distribution here. And then because the sample mean is negative 3.13 or approximately, you notice how that's labeled on the left along the horizontal axis. So the p-value is equal to the area shaded under the curve to the left of negative 3.13, which means the p-value is also equal to the probability the sample mean of the differences is less than or equal to negative 3.13. And now let's go to the T84 and perform a one sample t-test. To do this, press STAT, right arrow twice to test, select option two for t-test. We'll be using the data in L1, so we select data, down, mu sub zero is zero, down. The list is L1, which is correct, down. We are not using a frequency table, and therefore we enter one for frequency, down. We're testing to see whether mu sub d is less than zero, which means we select the less than inequality symbol, which is here in the middle, enter, down to calculate, and press enter. The t-score is approximately negative 3.0359, and the p-value is approximately 0 0.0095. Let's go ahead and record these. Before we compare the p-value to alpha and draw a conclusion, let's take a closer look at this t-score. If we were doing this by hand, we would take alpha equals 0 0.05, recognize that we have a left tail test, and determine the corresponding t-score shown here as negative 1.895.
Then we would calculate the t-score by hand, which is shown below, which gives us a t-score of negative 3.0374. This is a little bit different than the value from the t 4 because we are using a rounded value here for the sample standard deviation. Either way, notice how the z-score of negative 3.0374 is in the rejection region somewhere way over here, and therefore we are going to reject the null hypothesis. But let's also draw the same conclusion comparing alpha and the p-value. So comparing alpha and the p-value, notice how the p-value is low compared to alpha, and when the p-value is low, the null must go, or more formally, because the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, or because alpha is greater than or equal to the p-value, we reject the null hypothesis. And therefore the conclusion is, at a 5% level of significance from the sample data, there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the sensory measurements on average are lower after hypnotism. Hypnotism appears to be effective in reducing pain. I hope you found this helpful.